So when we're doing a problem like this here, uh, um, basically what I want you guys to understand is, you know, basically when we talked about factoring, we said, hey, look at the area, look at the area, right? So if you were looking at the area, and we say, all right, what is going to be one side length? Well, we have a problem here because in this time, when we start looking at side length, is there any number or term that I can multiply by each one of these that would give me, or I'm sorry, that would provide each one of these terms? No, you could say x would work for the first two, right? But it wouldn't work for the third because the third doesn't have an x. And you could say, well, and 20, 21 and x don't have any numbers that are in common. So therefore, looking at this area as a rectangle like this is not going to work. However, if you guys remember, we did talk about when we multiplied, when we multiply trinomials, or I'm sorry, when we multiply binomials, Savannah, I'm really, really trying to help you out. All right, but if you're not going to be doing what you need to be doing, I'm not going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Savannah, you know exactly what you need to be doing right now, and I know exactly what you are doing. So. What we need to do is, again, let's take a look at trying to find the area. Because remember, we multiply, when we multiply two binomials, we got a box, right? So one thing that I'm going to show you guys how to do is how can we look at the factoring? How can we use the factoring technique, this area, to determine what the factors are for this? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take x squared, and I'm going to take 20, and I'm going to fill in these two boxes. Okay, That goes there, and that one goes in there. It's still a box, right? Now, um, the problem is I only have 21x. I need to somehow fill in these other two boxes. So to do that, what we do is what we call the AC method. C and B multiplication plus. And AX squared plus BX plus C. This is what we call a quadratic. And if you guys look at the value of C in this case is 20. And the value of b in this case is 21. And basically what this diamond is is a way for us to organize everything so we can identify what two numbers multiply to give me 20 and add to give me 21. And I'm looking for those two numbers. I look at Mariana, Jennifer. Let's think about two numbers that multiply to give me 20. I have 20 times 1, 10 times 2, 5 times 4. Right? Those are all the numbers that multiply to give me 20. Out of those numbers, though, what are the only two that multiply uh, or that add up to give me 21? 20 and 1, right? So I'm going to add 20 and 1 inside of the box. Now remember, though, these two, these two boxes have to represent my middle term. So they can't be 20 and 1 because 20 plus 1 gives you 21. I need them to be 20x and 1x. Right? Because 20x plus 1x gives you 21x. Now, let's look at what, um, what are all the side lengths. Remember, remember, factoring is finding the side lengths. So let's look at the upper left-hand corner. What are the side lengths for x squared? x and x. Would everybody agree with me? x times what gives you 1x? x times what gives you 20x? So therefore, you guys can see this is x plus 20 times x plus 1. All right. The other thing I want you guys to notice is notice a is equal to 1. When a equals 1, Lynette, when a equals 1, what you guys see here, what I want you guys to understand is the numbers that I found, 20 and 1, look it. They show up in the factors. Right. So if you guys can just determine what these, fa what these values are, they show up in the factors. They are part of your numbers and your factors. But I want you guys to understand that's not always going to be the case. That's why I want you guys to understand using this um, square to find the factors of it. Okay? Huh? 